Hello folks and welcome to our next episode in our 1000 euro E36 EV conversion build. So today things get moving finally because I know I've been giving you, you guys a lot of talking videos on this particular subject so far. So today we have commenced the conversion process. So let's go have a look and uh, see the first incision. So, our trusty Hellroth Red E36 is now up on axle stands and some blocks for added safety. And uh, we have just now removed this horrible exhaust system. It's actually not in bad nick considering the mileage of the vehicle, but I have to say I'm glad... Uh, to begin removing uh, some of the superfluous components. Now, thing is that we are going to be doing this over a few, a few days. I'm not going to be boring you guys to death with a three hour video showing me undoing every nut, bolt and screw on this particular car because, well, I won't do that to you guys. Now, but what we will do is we will be coming back at some critical moments as they particularly pertain to the things that we're going to be concerned with for the EV conversion. So next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get the heat shields and the drive shaft, shaft out. No need to bore you guys with that particular segment. It's generic. So we will see you uh, probably when we're winching out the old diesel heart from our E36. Stay with us. Alrighty, update time. So, right now we have on our trusty 1000 euro E36 build, we have the gearbox cross member is removed. Gearbox is supported on our transmission jack. The uh, exhaust is out, the heat shields are out, and the drive shaft is out. So, next thing we gotta do we start draining fluids. Uh, I've also disconnected the hydraulic supply to the clutch here and basically blanked that guy off so we can drain out the fluid uh, from our clutch system. Then I'm going to get the battery out and start stripping out the front stuff. So ticking along. Um, so we're hopefully going to still be on target to have this thing out today. Stay with us. Alrighty, so right now we've got the rad out, the intercooler out, most of the cooling pipes out, so we've freed up all of this space here. Uh, looks like we were on the verge of having a runaway diesel for ourselves, but that's thankfully we avoided that. I've actually sold my first part, that uh, radiator header bottle there. I've, so I've uh, sold that to a friend of mine, so that's our first purchased part to add to the budget uh, pretty much big fluid draining session coming to the the end coolant engine oil and power steering fluid is just uh, dripping its way out there now fortunately actually most of it went into the containers which definitely makes a force for me um, so next job is basically I'm going to pull the, the battery out Disconnect the electrical harness, uh, disconnect the fuel lines, get that tank out of there and then we should be pretty much set to start hooking up and undoing the mountings and starting to take the weight off and uh, yeah look at pulling this thing out of here guys so and of course the weather is uh, helping me, a little bit of rain to keep me cool um, so that's excellent and uh, yeah so Next part should be engine pulling. Now I know you guys are probably thinking, it's raining, we're not going to be taking engine out today. Oh yes we are, 
because we got the snowsuit. So, next thing we got to do is we got to disconnect the battery, take that out, disconnect the electrical system, which should hopefully be one twist plug if I get lucky. Uh, and we got to disconnect the fuel system, which is chop two flexible hoses. Then we're ready to hook up the crane and start winching out the diesel. Wish me damp look. Progress. So we're pretty much completely disconnected. Um, in here we've disconnected the two multi-pin plugs to disconnect the engine harness from the body. Pulled out the DME or DDE as it is in this case. So all that's out. Electrical harness is completely disconnected. Fuel is disconnected. Chop the heater hoses on the back. Chop the vacuum line. Take, taken the bolts off the engine mounts. So at this point now we're ready to hook up the crane and basically pull this thing out of here. And I will bring you guys along for some of that because you do like the drama. Go on, admit it, you really do. This is it guys, the big moment has arrived. Time for a runaway diesel. Or maybe I'll be the one running away. Either way, something fun is going to happen. has of course jammed. Take 25. Had to jack up the back of the gearbox to stop it wedging on the uh, cross support brace there. Now we're moving. Well, in this case maybe not so affordable but anyway. Let's keep going. It's coming, it's coming. Why am I getting wedged now again? Crazy. Oh yeah, that freed her off. Alright. So if there's one question that you guys are always asking me, and I never answer for you, is how much weight are we going to shed? Well, today we have a surprise for you. So, we have engine and gearbox sitting on the, flo the floor, and I bought myself a Weehang crane scale that's good up to 300 kilograms. So, place your bets as to uh, what this is going to weigh is coming in at about 210 211 kilograms so next thing we're going to do going to split the gearbox off and uh, then we'll see oh it's beeping there it is 211.3 kilograms so alrighty so at this stage we have the gearbox pulled off uh, the clutch pulled off will be needing the uh, friction plate but not the uh, pressure plate um, this is one of those silly dual mass fl fly wheels so we certainly don't need any of that junk um, so the engine itself seems to weigh in at 171.1 kilos so we'll be comparing that to how much our DC motor and adapter plate weighs. So 
keep that number in mind folks so I'm gonna get this junk out of here now uh, we're gonna strip out some more crap out of the engine bay of the car then we're gonna pretty much call it a day alrighty so we are pretty much stripped out here I uh, got rid of a lot of the bits we don't need like bits of hosing the the old power steering pipes test fitted my new power steering line there so that's a perfect fit uh, we'll be covering power steering and power brakes in a new episode um, so this is pretty much stripped out and uh, we're going to pressure wash it get rid of all this grime and crud from the cross member and the uh, steering rack all that kind of thing there clean it up and get it ready for our motor so just looking out the back here this is our engine now all 170 kilograms of it um, I'm trying to sell this as a complete unit if I can't uh, then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna strip the wiring loom from that to save me ha having to buy these plugs and uh, things like that to reattach to the body harness I'll strip off the saleable bits like the alternator and the starter and things like that and we'll just have to weigh that in for scrap and over here we have the rest of it a load of pipe plastic fan shrouds exhaust radiator intercooler and heat shields and all that kind of stuff so that's uh yeah that's pretty much all junk at the minute we have sold the um radiator header bottle though so at least that's something so over here then we've our gearbox ready to go uh friction disc from the clutch is just sitting there now and in our next episode, we'll be showing you guys how we make that motor uh, with some of these aluminium plates up to this guy. And then we'll be getting it back into the car as quick as we can. So that is about it, folks. I uh, hope you've enjoyed this one. It's fairly generic. Uh, there's nothing particularly specific about what I've done here. It's just stripping out. I will be stripping out the fuel tank and fuel lines and stuff like that, but I'm not even going to make a video on that. It's just tearing stuff out. Um, anyways, hope you've enjoyed it. Hope you're following along with the project. Uh, check the links in the description for my Patreon and uh, PayPal if you wish to financially support some of these insane projects. Um, also, don't forget to like, share and subscribe. We will see you in the next episode and um, happy diesel engine removal. <laughs>